Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 608. Today we're going to take a look at Whistle Stop. Now, this is a brand new game coming out from Bezier Games. And in this game, players are going to be building tracks with a hand of tiles that they're dealt. And you're going to be building these routes and creating these stations and drop off points, all to kind of get your trains moved from kind of the East Coast over to the West Coast, moving through these different spots where you can score hopefully points, and then get all the way to the furthest west side of the board and then you're going to score some end game bonus points get some bonuses and things as your trains arrive so let's jump in and take a look at how the mechanics actually work and then I will tell you what I think okay so you can see the main board set up and this is actually kind of a puzzle piece board uh, that you set up it's a kind of a frame and then you'll randomly sort out some of these end game tiles and you'll see you can put these on this side here and then it gives you a very specific way to do these center tiles you have a certain amount of towns a certain amount of these tiles that are just you know plain old tracks and so on and you'll set those up and then players to start the game you can kind of see these are a little bit harsh light for these pastel colors uh, but you're going to take turns putting out trains on all these starting tracks here and the goal of the game is to then maneuver these trains to these kind of key locations and then also eventually sometimes get them all the way over here to the end that's going to be a way that you can score a lot of points you'll have a selection of tiles here that you can pick up uh, everybody will have a hand of three tiles to start and then also a player board you can see that here and these give you sort of little markers for your four actions you can do four actions on your turn and you've got these little kind of cogs here that you can acquire bonuses and purchase bonuses and you'll fit those in the most you can have there is three of those and then uh, you can actually have these purchased out from underneath you and go to somebody else as well so you have these little boards like that and you've got some stock tiles over there which i'll explain a variety of different colored cubes uh, you can see these stacks of coal here and so what's going to happen each round is you're going to deal out two to each player i've set this up here for a four player game and so every round except one you're going to deal out two cold every player and then the second to last round you're going to give each player a whistle uh, so you're going to acquire a whistles and coal and you can get these other ways uh, throughout the game and these are going to be the way that you actually sort of power the engines and move these around now there's two differences here when you power uh, with coal then you can move only from east to west if you use a whistle then you can uh, move backwards basically you can also move up and down in the same column as well even land on the same spot uh, with coal or with a whistle for that matter now what you're going to do let's just take a player board here as an example is you'll have a certain supply of coal and things off to the side uh, then you just take and mark that coal move the train as you will maybe move again maybe you acquired some coal from one of those actions so you get some extra so you can do 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 or maybe you put a you know a whistle on here so you're going to mark that four actions once you're done you'll discard all of these uh, back into the supply wipe those off and then you move on to the next turn now you're going to get those four actions and then at any point on your turn you can purchase up to two of these upgrades here and have those there so you can do that at any time it doesn't count as one of your four actions so when you play a coal to move then you're just going to be able to move like i said going to west and so obviously there's nowhere to move here so you're going to have a hand like i said of three of these tiles and you're going to move to the next stop so you can just play these as you go and then that one coal that you spent will allow you to move up to one stop so we would end up here and whenever you land on one of these type of things then you're going to get that colored cube so in this case we would have acquired a brown cube and then we would have put that off into our supply well why do you want cubes so maybe one of the tiles that somebody else has played or something we have in our hand will want for certain color cubes here so you can see this one wants a brown and a white cube and let's say we decided to play another coal and move it here we would have gathered a white cube and then we could play another coal and then maybe we play this tile out of our hand here and then bam we would move in here and we would pay that to the bank the brown and the white and you would see you get here five points if you land here without that there's a penalty you can see at the bottom minus one point so you want to be careful of that and then whenever you land on you can see this is a city here a usa freight and there's a various different cities here like this one here is the st louis express and you're going to take a stock from the matching stack and now you can see these are labeled one through six and you're going to set a pile of these going in an ascending numerical order so in this case you'd be the first player to do it so you take uh, the number one and you keep that in front of you 
and then other players are going to move around and they're going to land on different spots. Uh, now each of these spots here can only have one train and you can effectively kind of block off of the routes here, you can move through your own trains. Now these larger spots here, you can have multiple trains in there uh, from different players at the same time. Now there's some other key tiles here uh, to look at. So like this one here is a whistle factory. So you can wait when you land on there, you get a whistle. And again, those are useful because you can end up going backwards with the whistle. And that's some of the things you can kind of build up like these little combos where you hit certain resources and then maybe these trains collect these resources and then this one you know he comes back and you spend those resources because they're all sort of shared uh, between your collective company there uh, like here if you land in the coal yard you're going to get two coal this is a very key spot because coal like he's, like i said you know powers the engines for the most part and then yeah. you can also see here this trading post and you can see it says here you can do two trades okay so you can do one resource for two coal, uh, one whistle, and another resource. Let's just say these are basic resources. You can see here the color, so brown, gray, and white. Or you can do kind of the bonus resource, the rare resource. You can trade one of the red, green, or blue for two of the basic ones or a different uh, you know, rare resource maybe that you're looking for. So you could come here, trade a rare resource, get two of the basics, and then trade one of those basics for maybe two coal or something like that. Because maybe you've got a situation like this where this is close to you in proximity and you wanna sit here and kind of collect stocks in that company and score some points with that. Now it is possible if you're blocked off and you can't move, uh, then you just take a uh, free whistle from uh, the bank. Now let's take a look at a couple examples of some of these end game uh, spots here. Now these delivery spots are similar to what you've seen already. You need these three cubes, for example, and you'll get 15 points. If you don't have them, then you get minus four points. Then you also have these stock market spots. Now when you land there, you're gonna get this number of points for each stock that you have. So let's say I had, you know, like one, two, three, four of these, and then two blues. And I would get then, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six times three is 18. And then I have to give up one of my stocks though. And let's say here, in this case, I'll give up this blue stock because I'm in the lead with yellow. You're gonna get bonus points for having the most of a given stock in that case. So that's something to keep in mind. I uh, maybe even try to avoid landing uh, in these stock market spots, even though they can give you a good payout of points if you land there with a bunch of stock. Uh, when you end your turn, you're gonna refill your hand. There's gonna be a display of tiles here that you can choose from, or you can choose from the top of one of the uh, tiles off in the supply. And then after you're done choosing, you're gonna refill the display up. You can see here is a gold mine. As an example of a tile, you can stick this out here. And there are gold tokens in the game, and these will be a face down supply. So get one of these whenever you land in that gold mine, and you take and pick it up. And so you get three points. I believe they go like three to six points or something like that. So this is just a variety of points that you'll get at the end of the game. Oh, I should have mentioned this just a second ago. When you land in one of these end tiles, you're gonna take your train and mark it in one of these different spots and you get kind of like a bonus uh, resource here. So maybe I went and marked it here. So I would get a red cube, uh, some coal and a whistle. So I marked that. So that's just kind of a little bit of an extra bonus you get for shooting across to the other side. Now the game's gonna end in one or two ways. When one player has all of their trains over on this side, then the game will end uh, prematurely, so to speak, in that case. Or if you've played through all the rounds. Now here you can see all the different stacks of coal and whistles. As we start to uncover these, this is also a round timer. So if you get to this last stack here, and there's a different sort of length for the different player counts, you pull that off, that'll be the last round of the game. So let's look at just a couple examples of some of these upgrades. Remember, you can buy up to two of these on your turn. Now the cost is here. So two brown, two of any of the basic cubes or two white cubes in this case. Now if somebody else actually owns the tile, you still gotta pay this cost here, but you also have to pay them one of the more rare or fancy resources like these blues. You pay that to them, the fancy resource, and then just pay the normal cost here on the tile uh, to the bank. And these do a few different things. Now here you can see the points that you'll get at the end of the game for owning this upgrade tile. And then you've also, each of them has a special ability. So this one here is very interesting because you can spend a coal and actually just use the spot that you're already on. Because typically when you do that, you have to move. You gotta go somewhere. This one allows you just to stay on a spot and activate it again. Now this one allows you to upgrade a coal into a whistle. And then this last one here, the safe, allows you to actually pay a coal and swap one of the stocks that you currently have for one of the stocks that hasn't been taken yet. And then the stock that you gave away is then removed from the game. 
And that's just a little bit of an example. There's several of these and you'll deal out a certain amount per player, but these are gonna kind of also interact with some of the combos and things that are gonna be present on the main board. So that is Whistle Stop. What do I think of it? Absolutely love it. This is a fantastic game. Just go get it right now, highly recommend it. Uh, if you watched my pre-Gen Con video, this is one of the, my top 10 I was most anticipating. And I had a very much different impression of it just from kind of cursory, basically understanding what the game's about and seeing kind of pictures of it and kind of assessing in my mind how it was gonna play out. It's much heavier than I think it lets on. I wouldn't say it's like massively heavy or whatever nonsense, but this is a really crunchy, good game. Very, very simple uh, mechanics in a way that you just, you spend your coal, move your train, you know, pick up a resource, deliver a resource, whatever it is, you know, play tiles as you sort of uh, work out and kind of lay a new track. Everybody can, you know, start to use those tracks after a while. Now you're gonna have little combos that get set up that not only you can do, but other people can kind of maybe piggyback on or use a little part of that sort of route that you've built for their own combo somewhere else. You've got all the different upgrades that are gonna kind of just compound on top of that. And really interesting, there's a lot of different ways that you're gonna kind of score points. You can score a lot of points kind of during the game, making deliveries, doing all these kinds of things, getting over to the end of the board, making a bigger delivery for more points, picking up stocks, uh, trying to get your end game bonus. Like I mentioned during the walkthrough, you get like 15 points, I think, for having the most in the various different stocks. All kinds of different ways to play the game. You could be very um, kind of proactive in terms of ending the game and kind of shooting all the way across and pressuring that end game. It's not always going to go all whatever number of rounds it is, which is based on the number of players. It's not going to be fixed every time. You can really kind of put the pressure on uh, in that way. Uh, and so, and there's also a very interesting kind of hand management aspect, which is something I really like. It kind of evokes a little bit of that multi-use card game kind of thing where you, you know, you have to really think about when you're going to play maybe a city versus just a generic resource thing and where you're going to do it. And if you can kind of sort of move your train in a way that kind of blocks off maybe a section or something like that. Uh, you know, and the whistles kind of allow you to break that, but whistles are very hard to come by as compared to coal. You've got a little bit of the engine building you have to do because you're gonna get some free coal every turn, but that's not gonna go a very long way. You wanna get in a situation where you can generate more coal, do more stuff or generate whistles and all that kind of stuff. So there's, it's very, very simple. You know, you play the coal, the whistle, move the train, collect resources, deliver, whatever. But there's just all this other stuff going on on top of it. Uh, so the game takes, I would say, what's the box say? It says 75 minutes, yeah, whatever, 90 minutes, you know, maybe your first couple plays, but uh, really cool, very interactive. Uh, it evokes a lot of this sort of, um, like a slight 18xx vibe, even though like it's a worlds apart mechanically, there's a lot of that kind of shared, uh, you know, resources on the board, shared tracks, You've got the kind of stock aspect where you're trying to, you know, in addition to doing your kind of day-to-day -day stuff, you have that kind of end game bonuses for the different stocks. And that's really gonna kind of put pressure uh, one way or the other on when people want to end the game and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so I definitely recommend this. Very intuitive, easy to play, not a very long rule book, but there's a really a ton uh, going on. This is definitely one of my favorite games that I've played this year so far. So definitely, uh, I really recommend this one. Um, and I think this is one, it's interesting because I think mechanically, like the rules are, are well written. They're not very complicated. We did actually struggle with if you can land on the same tile that you started on, but that was my only question. And, um, but it's easy to digest and it's easy to get in. So you could play this with sort of your, kind of your next step type of game. Uh, but there's gonna be a lot going on. You know, somebody that's played it a lot is gonna be very practiced in terms of where they're blocking routes and all what kind of combos are there and available and how important certain parts of their engine building are gonna be. But you can all sit down and play the game together or you can have a table of just absolute cutthroat sharks and, you know, play it out. And kind of, I'm, I'm curious to see you know, how much this kind of stands the test of time. Because I, I feel like this is gonna sort of appeal to that train gamer, the economic, the Euro gamer, kind of the race for the galaxy style of player that likes the hand management, likes the cards, likes to kind of deal with that sort of limited, you know, set of options to a degree. But what can I squeeze out of all of that? But again, falling back on 
really easy accessible rules that anybody can kind of dive in and basically make a fool of themselves out of, right? You can just get in there and play and go, oh, you beat me by 50 points, but you know, I had fun, you know, building my engine. So I think this is going to be a very interesting uh, game in terms of how it shakes out for everybody. Okay. That's whistle stop. Thanks.